Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to the tenth uh, dev stream of Legend of Alchemists. I'm sorry I'm a bit late today. Uh, my grandma just got out of the hospital. Uh, she's doing well. I'm happy to see her. So I just had a bit of a chat. Uh, yeah. So let's get into this. Where do we leave off? Well, let's hit play. Let's uh run the thing from the top. Think every, let me just check everything's working over here. Just unmute the audio, maximize on play. Just make sure this is working. And we are live. Go hit start. Well, cheat load. Cheat load in so we can load where we want. And we're working on the we were working on the AI. We still will be working on the AI, uh, but primarily it's for this cutscene. So we will be making this cutscene awesome. That's the goal for today: is to finish this cutscene if we can. Uh, I am late, so let's actually mute that audio. So we're gonna run up to these guys, and they're gonna start fighting. And uh, we gotta fix that sliding. And we want the goblins to not win like that. <laughs> Whatever they're doing here, we don't want that. So we want cutscenes to trigger. We want um, the fight to be choreographed a bit better. And we want this guy here, who's got the arm guard. Uh, we want him to be more involved. Uh, now, we could make this character stand out a little bit more. Also, we need to fix whatever the hell that was. Was that because I wasn't looking at them? Yeah, okay. So let's turn off Maximize on Play. Let's open up the jungle. Jungle Area 2. And let's get into this. Okay. So let's, uh, first off, let's open up the bug invasion actors and let's just grab this AI manager just have it open because we're going to need it also I looked over the uh, devlog and um, see I wasn't sure if this was readable because I look at my streamlab thing over there and it looks really tiny but yeah it is readable I think if I can read it, you guys can read it. Um, just because even though I have a bigger monitor here, it seems to translate well onto the left one. So on my, my laptop screen, uh, it's readable. So I hope that's readable for everyone. If it's not, please leave a comment and I'll try to like zoom in more and stuff like that. Um, so let's just uh, see here. So... When we run over, these guys attack. This guy usually dies first. We want this guy to be the one that turns around because uh, he's like more middle-ish. So it would be nice if we can save this cutscene um, and just kind of, if we could just kind of like rotate these guys like this a bit. And we'll open up this cutscene again. The uh, bug invasion fighting timeline. So I, I shouldn't be calling it a cutscene. It's not a cutscene. I mean, I guess it is. I don't know. I guess cutscene would be like when the scene cuts in. So they still translate pretty well. I don't like how this guy here is going. A little bit like that. Okay. So let's just go over the whole scene one more time. Uh, so in jungle area one. Let's go over from the start. So jungle area one, as we approach this intersection, we're going to see over to our left side, there's a goblin fighting a bug. This is going to be our arm guard, arm guard buddy. And uh, we'll help him defeat this. And if, um, so let's, uh, let's run that. Uh, not in uh, just the combat timeline. So we see these guys fighting. And we'll uh we'll we'll make that maybe a bit faster and more violent later. 
Um, and our character's going to run up. And if we try to walk past, he's going to ask for help. Um, or we're just going to go up and attack this guy. We actually can't leave unless we attack the guy. Now that's another thing we got to uh, watch for is because there is a teleport skill. Uh, we won't have it at this point in the game, but we're going to probably have to write some code to make sure we can't teleport when we're in uh, the boundary area. So we'll have a state machine or, or state machine, a bool or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go, right? Um, so once you defeat him, he says, oh, okay, my name's this guy. We got to hurry or something. There's people up here. And then uh, he runs off. And then when we enter jungle area two, we don't want any like freedom of um, like we or maybe we do. We get here, we're gonna see him run towards the bugs. So we want that's one cutscene we want to do is the run towards the bugs cutscene. And we want him to get in the range and start like wailing on one of these guys. And then um, what we also want is we want our character to get kind of like bound. So we want another boundary. Um, we have this approach boundary that when we enter this, um, these guys turn into an actual AI units. So before that, their AI is paused and they're just like playing their little timeline. They're just doing this over and over again. Uh, and again, the timing of this and the sound effects, we have to figure that out. Uh, we'll do that later though. Right now, I just want to get it done. Uh, and I want it to be start to finish playable for the jungle temple and um so we can have a demo out and then we'll add the sounds later and then people can play the demo we can get feedback and we can start to actually like uh suss out what to do um in terms of like improving the game because we have two dungeons done in this game and uh after the first demo we'll start working on the snow area uh, ideally and then um when when that's like half done i'll start to touch up the dark woods area and then that second demo will get released for the dark woods and then we'll finish up the snow area and start or start working on the lava area the volcano area and once that's halfway done we'll touch up the snow area you could i think that's going to be the plan i wanted it to be like a demo that has every time we have a dungeon complete we want to be like putting that demo out uh anyways which will be the full game so everything will be playable um we want to have our guy run in. So this guy is going to be, where is he? So we still have to figure out a name for him. Uh, so far, the naming scheme has been like Hegu Hegu and Kuma Kuma. So Bear Bear and I don't even know what Hegu Hegu means. Um, I, I think it's because he was a witch doctor. I thought like Hag, like a Hag. I hope that doesn't mean any Hegu Hegu. I hope that doesn't mean anything uh, in a different language. Um, so what we could do is we could just have this guy's AI set so that he's going to just run up or we can have him put in a cutscene. Um, with the cutscene, it's going to use root motion and because the ground is so uneven and we're going to be running up beside him, I think it would be better to have him set with a target. Uh, so we'll go into the AI here. I also want to clean up the AI folder. So I, I will have this AI behaviors. I want to take this folder and just put it out here for now. And I want to start putting um, the schedules and the AIs together. So I have an issue here is I have two different like idle to retreats uh, or sorry, idle to chase because I merged folders um, and I, I moved something. And when I merged it with an old folder, it it didn't it didn't overwrite because I'm using folders uh, or sorry, a hard drive SSD things. I'm not doing it the way you're supposed to with GitHub. I've never really used GitHub. I have used it, but I never really like. I I don't I don't like it because I'm I'm stubborn boomer. I'm a millennial, but uh, I didn't grow up with it, so I'm just like okay. I don't I don't. I know that's really silly. Uh, it's just how I am. So I I like to have these files. Uh, on my SSD. Um. So when I merge them this thing happened so uh we're gonna go into character scripts we're gonna find that one actually so we'll set this here and we'll just delete this sucker so this might destroy a few things uh these game events test schedule don't need test schedule on alert finish it's so this is a game event uh this was something that was being tested we don't actually need that right now 
So we want to get the schedules as well. So AI schedules. So we have this. Put it up here. And we're just going to go to assets and we're going to just make a new folder and call it uh, AI. Um, folder. That might be really stupid. We'll just take, for now though, we'll take these schedules and the behaviors and put them right in this AI folder. Um, maybe we'll call it AI schedule, uh, AI system, systems. So uh, we have the behaviors, which if you guys missed the last time, we'll get rid of this test thing. Uh, the behaviors are essentially these script scriptable objects. Uh, each AI has, okay, so I should explain the schedule first. So there's a time system, right? So every AI has, uh, there's a, uh, refers to the day cycle manager. And we can put in several different of these scheduled behaviors. These are called scheduled behaviors, right? And we can say uh, between the hours of 10 and uh, 12, uh, we're going to be idling. And then if anyone comes into our range, we're going to chase them and we're going to attack them. And then we can say from 12, let's say, to tw uh, 12, sorry, from 12 a.m., 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, to midnight. So afternoon to midnight, we can say something like sleep or just wander around, right? So the idea is I want everything to have like a bit of a sleep schedule in a way. Um, why did my camera just go so dark all of a sudden? I didn't change any of my lighting. Let's open this sucker up. 5% maybe? Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know. I bought these lights um, because during streaming during the day, the lighting outside really like affects it, and uh, all the people online said to get the lights. But my my webcam has a um, a light on it. I turn these lights off. Yeah, see, the webcam light doesn't work, but sometimes it do. I, I'm bad at cameras, uh, so let's turn this on to five percent. Uh, I like the cool lighting a lot more than the hot lighting that to 10 that's a bit better right okay so so i just wanted to fix that i don't think it really matters for the dev part but you know uh, we so we have these two we, we can have these schedules right for the ai and we can have as many of these as we want uh i, I don't have any like code to detect like overlapping shit um sorry my hair is wild right now uh but uh, it's it's a, it's a rough thing for schedules, right? So sleep cycles, uh, maybe patrol schedules. Um, I'm trying to make it more complicated as we go uh, and trying to figure out what the best way to do it is. Right now, most things are just set for like 24-7 or 24 hours. But I would like it to have like, if we go this far with the game, you know how there's these guys with the torches. I would like like some of them patrolling the camp and then at other hours, they, they're resting at the tent and then another shift of goblins is walking around you know stuff like that just little like uh little the small the, because we're using an, uh unity assets it's the small details uh and and we're also using like hand painted kind of low polyish uh things the thing that really charms me in video games is the small details where you feel like you're actually part of a world like i don't want these goblins to be patrolling the camp 24 7 without sleeping at all i think that would be nuts but if we have like a 12 hour cycle or sorry, like a 16 hour cycle or, you know, like something like that. Uh, and we can also have them like um, just to open one of these things uh, on top of the AI alerted um, reaction to player. Like we have wave dialogue, play cutscene, look at, rotate towards, ignore uh, objectives like play emote, eat, drink, cooking, deliver item, retrieve item, sleep. Not all these are programmed, but. The idea is we want them to be able to feel like they're alive, right? Like they're actually, like we want to give a shit about what they're doing in the in the fortress. We want to give a shit about what they're doing. Um, so the the enemies are going to be also sleeping, hopefully, and they'll they'll be reactive. So when they're sleeping, if they if they're alert, so we can just for like example, I'll click this wander to patrol, and I'll click con I'll hit Control D. And I'll put uh, sleep defensively. 
or sleep um, alert or let's say alert sleep, defensive sleep, just for now. And we can say here we want sleep. Um, there's also sleep at home. So sleep at home means they'll go to a waypoint. And uh, if the player gets um, in our uh, area, we want to switch to a defensive alert state. So our character, will, they'll wake up and they'll like rotate and look towards the, the player. And if the player gets in react ra range, they'll combat. They'll enter combat and start attacking. And then what we do is we'd shift, uh, when we go to the schedule, we would shift this behavior from our schedule. Um, we sh shift it to idle the chase for that time period. And then um, after that's done, we sh shift it back. Uh, so there's a couple of use cases we have to figure out, still have to iron out, but that's the idea is that we want these things to be alive. Uh, we want the game to actually feel like the, the enemies aren't just here to like wander around and then chase us. They, they have like a little fortress. So for example, um, this is one of the quest items actually, but, uh, just for sake of, um, these are flower monsters, right? So we could have like a, um, a little like flower nest, <laughs> so to speak. And these guys are just like, this is where they live. I mean, that's a really like, so they'll come back here to sleep and stuff. They protect the flowers. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure out something for them. And these bugs, uh, these are cutscene bugs, but we want the bugs to have like a burrow. So maybe ideally at, um, and I, ho I hope I don't forget this. I have notes, but I don't want to dox myself. So I don't want to put them up. I'm, I'm going to sort out my notes at some point so I can have notes during stream. So we can all ride in it together. Well, I mean, it'll be me riding in it, but you know, like we can discuss what's going on. But if we have like a burrow, like, you know, something like this uh, here, um, we could have the bugs like crawl into it and then all sleep in here. Just like small things like that. Then <laughs> the player can go in there with a flame spell and just exterminate every single last one of the fuckers. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's the idea. So anyways... Um, let's just set this guy to AI so that when the player enters the scene, so let's make a new, let's control D here. Let's just go a uh, bug gate invasion. And we're going to say, um, uh, enter scene, cutscene or enter zone cutscene. So I think what we should do is we should have a, when the player walks in this time for this zone, it should like have like the camera pan and then look over here. And while it's panning, uh, this guy will be running and it'll be AI set. So we'll say uh, move to destination. We have to get a good angle. Now there's a rule in cinematography that you don't want, um, from what I'm, I've been told this. I, I've never, another, I've never studied it. Uh, we don't want to have like the camera shift. Like, if we're gonna shift like this, we want this to be like a 180 degree plane. We don't ever want the camera to go this way, and we don't ever want to suddenly like jump cut over here, um, because uh, we've seen this area. We've been looking at it, but on first glance, if you're just like a random, sorry, uh, like a new person, uh, you want it to be consistent for the whole cutscene and then you want it to like be on this plane so you understand where everyone is relation you don't want to be like cutting over here and then suddenly he's on the left when he was on the right i mean it might not be that confusing um but we want to have that in our heads because we've been zooming around so you guys even you guys have been watching this you already have like a 3d map in your mind you have spatial awareness where things are um but new people who just got here um when when they enter through this gateway, the players, they're not going to have that. So we want to keep it 180 degrees. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll have like a, a cutscene where it's like, uh, I don't know if we want the player to be like so far away. And I don't know if we want to have the camera like maybe up here. Maybe like this. So we have the enter zone cutscene and this is... Uh, 
I control D this, so we'll grab this and uh, we'll just hit, make a new timeline. Uh, timeline. And we'll say uh, bug gate invasion enter zone timeline. And uh, we'll call it a cutscene because the player, I don't want the player moving around. Okay, and that's that. Uh, play on awake is false. And the cutscene trigger. So let me move that up so you guys can see that. Um, it's We have collision, on trigger, enter, on trigger, exit, and on scene load. Uh, we'll just put that to on scene load. And I wish, I, I, I've been making this as I go, so I wish on trigger, enter was under on trigger, enter. But I'm scared to change that in the code in case it moves this because it's an enum. So it, it kind of like has a number. It's enum, right? It's I don't know what it stands for, like enumerator, so en enumerable. No, no. Anyways, there's a, it's a number. You can get the number of each uh, variable in an enum. It's translatable to a number. It's like a flag. Um, if I don't know if C sharp has flags. Um, a little different though. So uh, cutscene control is in there. We don't really need that to be there, but we have it. And we're going to have, so we have all these options here. See, this is the one I should have, I checked the dev stream for the code. I should have checked it for this. Uh, so is it replayable? No. Has it played? Nah. Is it skippable? No. Is it going to freeze time? No. Is it going to disable player controls? It sure is. Uh, is it going to turn the player to an actor? Um, I don't think so. We're gonna hide the UI. No, we don't need to. Pre-fade? No. Nah. So we have a bunch of options there. Um, what we are gonna do is that when the cutscene starts, we're gonna take our jungle buddy and we're gonna set a target. We're gonna go AI component. No, it wasn't AI component, was it? Uh, what was his, it was it movement manager? Set destination, we don't want that though. Hold on. We're going to open up the jungle area. I can't remember because uh, set destination is the. Oh, that is in the movement manager. Never mind. Because that's also what the uh, uh, nav mesh agent uses. That That's what that function is called in the nav mesh agent. I don't really like that, actually. I don't know why I did that. Set destination. I should have called that something else. Uh, we're going to run with it, though, because we know what it is. It makes sense, right? Set destination for movement manager. Uh, it just does a couple things that the nav mesh won't. Uh, it interacts with the other things, the other components, I should say. I should be accurate here. Uh, so what are we going to do here is we're going to look here. We're going to grab this waypoint. And we're going to, this is for, uh, this, this waypoint helps me figure out where the doors are. So we'll just control D it just because it's an empty game object and we can just when you make it an empty game object, sometimes it's uh, annoying where it gets placed. Um, and this is above the ground. And we're going to go, uh, he's going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, he's going to see that there's two bugs fighting one guy over here. This guy's KO'd. So he's going to set his destination here. So we're going to say bug invasion uh, named waypoint. So it's it's going to be called named waypoint because uh this guy is called named bug fight we, we we don't know what they call him yet uh he's got like an arm guard so maybe we'll call him like arm arm <laughs> or um because it has that theme like kuma kuma and uh hegu hegu so they they double name themselves so guard guard yeah maybe guard guard no, nah, it's got to be something not like that. <laughs> Let's not name him after like a piece of equipment. Let's give him a little bit of respect. Don't want to call people Spear Spear or anything like that. So uh, as the cutscene starts, we're going to have this guy's destination set to this waypoint. Um, I think we may have to pause his AI. And then on Movement Manager, maybe we'll make a Unity event that says like when destination uh reached 
So when we set a destination, maybe we um, can you get it to go off. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, I smell a Nintendo lawsuit. Uh, how so? And uh, welcome to the stream. So we'll get the um, very much like Zelda. A little bit, perhaps. Uh, it's all about alchemy, so there's not going to be much um, tool use or stuff like that. There is a couple like temples. Um, but yeah, <laughs> they can lawsuit me if they want. We'll see what happens. It'll be exciting. Okay, let's see here. Uh, so we'll set him to do the waypoint. And this timeline, we're going to make a, uh, I think it's, um, what type of camera do we want? It's like a, the virtual one. Yeah, it's this one. We'll set that priority to one. And we'll put it in here. Uh, Nintendo has their heads so far up their big ass that they will sue anything and anyone who even has something similar. Yeah, I've been hearing about that. There's a, a lot of recent controversy, right? Um, uh, I think it was a PAL world. They defined something like, uh, if there's like a, my brother was telling me, if, the, if there's like a, something in a field that you throw a ball at or throw an item at or something. Yeah, with PAL world. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> so we'll see if they try to ruin the gaming industry or the gaming communities. I hope they, uh, I hope they get a lot of pushback. Because if we, the consumers, just like push back really hard and we just stop buying their stuff, maybe they'll maybe they'll listen. <laughs> if we can get organized, uh, yeah, maybe may, maybe we're screwed. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I think it's Control Shift F when you have the camera selected, and that moves it into position. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Nintendo will try to patent. <laughs> you want to walk pay Nintendo? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't put it past them. If you walk with. Uh, any type of intentions to uh, do anything. Uh, if you call your running shoes, running shoes. Like in the um, Pokemon games. Just get sued. Uh, let's see here. So we also want this to point towards... Um, so, so I think what we'll do, um, we'll figure out where we spawn in exactly. So let's uh, run this from the top, uh, from the title, and we'll uh, we'll get that uh, position that the player's in. Uh, Nintendo should get a massive L for their scummy behavior. I agree. I agree. They should get a massive L. Um, I, I think I think that's that's I I think using lawyers to like. Especially on like uh, smaller companies like that, just for something that's like slightly similar is, oh, I mean I don't think Power World's like like is actual competition for them either. It's just like a, it's a small game that's kind of like passed. And and Pokemon's like a, one of the top franchises in the world. It, like it's, yeah. they're not they're 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 not in any danger. They need to get their lawyers on a leash. Okay, so this guy has moved in the right position. His AI is paused. If I throw this off, he's gonna start attacking. Um, a little, a little buggy. Um, I don't like where we spawn. Um, we're, we spawn very far forward from uh, the mountains. Where is the? Uh, where is our? There should be a timeline here. Jungle Temple Zone Transporter. This is the wrong one. Uh, Power World is more innovative than Pokemon has been for the past decade. True, true. Maybe they see a, an up and comer, and they want to just try to like uh, take him out. Yeah, I, I hope Nintendo drops that shit. That's terrible. Yeah, they're probably jealous. They like see someone actually do something new and innovative and they're just like oh shit let's get them let's get them now and then they're probably going to steal stuff from pal world <laughs> okay so this is back here so the waypoint to load in uh let's see here system helpers waypoints uh jungle area two waypoints so we want the um the east entrance yeah 
and we'll take this original waypoint. Uh, we'll we'll uh, get back to the jungle area actually, in outside of scene view before I change things and realize it isn't saved. Uh, yeah, Pokemon games have been shout out every year, but now they are not releasing and having three years of dev time releasing game next year. Okay, so they're tra they're uh, putting that um, dev time up on it. That's good. Yeah, they need to. I when games when companies start shitting out games every year, they kind of like lose, like. They lose any like type of innovation, I guess. They're just like, you know, trying to get that money before it runs out, trying to beat that uh, horse before it stops shooting out money. Yeah, that's like um, like some of those Call of Duty games are very similar. They usually have decent differences in the story, but um, if they don't innovate, like they just get left behind. Uh, I actually liked how COD did the zombies. Uh, I thought that was cool. Um, I haven't played a COD game in a long time, but yeah, Pokemon. If they if they keep or like Assassin's Creed is another one. Like the games just don't innovate properly when they have that short deadline, and then they try new ideas that aren't executed perfectly because they had to like cram them in. Uh, okay, let's see. What one is this again? It's the jungle. Uh, this hierarchy needs sorted. This is the jungle temple one. We'll put it in timelines. In fact, let's just take timelines, control D, and we'll take this, hit F2, and we'll put this in, uh, we'll call this transporters. And we'll take this jungle temple transporter and put it right down there. Now, where's the one I want? Jungle area one transporter. We'll grab that. Uh, we can see the collision box is there. So we want the waypoint to be roughly here. Let's say here. So let's get that waypoint and move it here. It's about there and we'll lock in the number um yeah unlike releasing shit every year maybe now they will make a good game yeah hopefully they do <laughs> yeah yeah they they need to like take their time they want to stay um well i was gonna say stay relevant but when you have that huge franchise it's like oh they can just kind of get away with like putting out shovelware almost uh, i can shit on pokemon all i want i have three games from them <laughs> nice yeah, I've only played a, a I've played a, a I've probably played like a few, like maybe like six throughout my life, but um I'm never really excited. Like I'm not excited about the new releases and I'm I'm just like may like I think I the last one I played was on a Switch um and it was all right, but they all feel very similar. Like they're all the same pretty much. So like once you play one of them, it it feels like you've played all of them. Okay, let's move this guy back. He's going to be slightly ahead of the player when we get in here. And let's get that waypoint again. Uh, we've locked it in. So let's grab the jungle area east entrance waypoint. And we're just going to switch this to 192. And we're going to keep... Uh, uh, actually, what is the, the depth here? Because the depth will be different. We're going to take that waypoint. We're going to lower it down to about here. Lower it a little bit more. A little bit more. That should be good, and we'll. It's going to be four, so four and then. F so we'll grab the um, east waypoint, and we'll say four and fifty, four and fifty-seven. That makes sense. That's good, and a two seventy degree rotation. So we're good. Um, same with Assassin's Creed. Assassin's uh, repetition. That's what it should be called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Assassin's repetition, a hundred percent. Uh, I stopped playing them after a while just because I was like, holy shit, like, there's there's so many of them now, and they're just, like, the same shit. And and they've tried, uh, my brother played a few of the um, the newer ones, and they've tried to change it a little bit, and, but it just feels so, like, I don't know. It just feels, like, off. Assassin's Formula, yeah. Rinse and repeat. I think um, I I've tried to play one, and it had, like, I, I think it had microtransactions or something. So they're really trying to milk that dead horse or, or whatever the expression is. Beat that dead horse. Yeah, you don't milk a horse. What am I saying? Uh, okay. Um. So that's the new waypoint. So that be should be different. Let's test that so we don't... Um. Actually, let's add the timeline up. So let's get the... Uh, where was it? Yeah, okay, I'm already on top of it. Uh, enter cutscene, and let's add 
let's open up that timeline, add a Cinemachine track. We're going to get the player manager, uh, open up his brain here, get the camera, the main camera, drag that shit right on there. And we're going to, as we enter the area, we're going to throw the uh, this camera, which we're going to call action camera, uh, action camera one. And we're going to have that just there. And it's going to be, if we just uh, unlock this, uh, that's the one over here. We'll turn it to one and hopefully the transition doesn't suck. And we'll save it, open, go to title, and just see what it looks like. Uh, we want it, when we load in, we can see the combat and we can see our buddy uh, running up and... Yeah, I mean he's sliding, but he's running. And where are we? We're just behind the camera. So maybe... Maybe that, not. Nah. I need to see that again. I think I might have the camera assigned to look at our, our friend. So we're in the frame and it's going to have him run up. Um, and we have to have that transition back to the player camera. Or maybe it'll just be a jump cut. I'm not sure. A good, a good question is why is he sliding? Turn goal area two. I'll grab him. Uh, his schedule is paused, but I don't think that will do it. Is his character handler on neutral? Maybe it is the pause. We'll allow that um, to be tested. Grab that action camera. Does it have, uh, it has a look at. Grab him, have that set as look at. Just see what that looks like again. I'll load in from the title. Cheat load this in. Yeah, there we go. A lot better. Um, it's going to sit for a little too long. We want to get back to being able to control a character and run up. Okay, and we can't catch up to him until he gets there. Good. Um, and uh, I'm going to lower that uh, that boundary for initiating the AI combat. And we got to fix this. <laughs> These guys don't know what's going on. Um, Oh, you know what? Because he has the arm guard, um, I think he would be cool to have, um, like, as a captain. So let's go uh, prefab, select asset, project. Okay, didn't do it. Prefab, select asset. And this is our armed guard thing. We'll call him Jungle Goblin. Uh, we'll still give him a name. But we'll go uh, captain and just be like... Uh, um, Captain, uh, let's call him Captain Omgard for now. Uh, stupid triple A. Yeah, I think the video game industry has been, uh, declining. Um, I think the indie game industry is going to rise again. Uh, it seems to go in flow, right? There's like, it seems like there's a flow, like there's, um, we have triple A's and then indies kind of like take over and then the triple A's steal all of, steal all of the indie ideas and then the triple A's ruin it and then the indies... <laughs> come back and then they steal all of our ideas and we steal theirs too a bit but you know um and i think of this ai stuff coming out they're also going to be uh the the consumers the indie devs and stuff are going to have more power uh chinese triple a with wukong seems to be on the, the rise yeah yeah uh, i know i didn't play that game yet but i saw a lot of people playing it and um it looks like a, a really good game. Everyone says good things about it. So, um, yeah, uh, North American or Western AAA is going to lose its spot for sure. And uh, European AAA, I guess. Okay, so he runs into place. He starts attacking, like, immediately. So he attacks... So if he, if, if he gets within the approach timeline, maybe we should trigger it on him as well. Um, to resume all their schedules. No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to... I, I got to run it from the top one more time and just visualize what I want. I'm going to maximize it on play. Pause this. Cheat load. Okay, we're, we're running. We need to hide the UI. Actually, no, because these alchemy symbols are not supposed to be there right now. Uh, we, we can see them fighting. Um, 
I think the goblin there needs to be a little bit more. And then when we run past that barrier, they start to actually fight. Oh, I did the title again, jungle area two. And we want to when it gets to his destination. Do we want an event to go off? Let me just check the movement manager code. Cause um if we set destination, we have a reach destination. Where does that get called? We call that in the AI component. Okay. So I think I did program something to for this use case. Um, retreat to location. Obje objectives. Idle at waypoint. Um, I could add one for going towards something. It's gonna need a lot of work to refract, refractor, refactor this. Um, there's a lot of old code. Uh, do I need? Because the movement, the movement manager should probably not be handling events when we, when we reach destination. That should be in the AI component. We have a system. for target waypoint. So I should switch that so that the schedule of this guy when he enters this room or when the scene is here. So this one in particular, we can unpack him from the prefab at some point. Um, we can make it so his schedule is set so he runs over here and then um, Or we could just make his damage like zero. Because I don't want him zeroing these guys out. I don't want these guys zeroing them out until everyone's in place. And then the player can come in and um, start to help them kill them. And this one in particular is the only bug that's going to turn around and attack the player. So let's just um, select all of these two, these two guys who are attacking. Go to character handler or um, attack manager, where is it? Grab goblin spear attack here. And we'll, we'll, I think this is where the damage is located. Attack modifier. How did I do the attack damage? We'll go into attack handler I think each I think each character has an attack handler attack manager yeah so it's tech manager and we'll go into the damage colliders um, they get turned on so the damage value is the character strength plus the attack modifier okay oh, sorry times attack modifier so the solution uh, really um, is to cha change their strength to zero but their stats get loaded in. So our solution is either to uh, make some type of boolean that says turn their damage off, or we could make um, a cutscene stats for them, or we could have their own, like uh, we could just duplicate their attack skill and turn that modifier to zero. So we either give them a mode where they do no damage, uh, give them or create modifiers that make them zero. I think making a mode is actually probably the easiest and most reusable. And then we don't have to create a bunch of um, extra like scriptable objects. And I'm going to put it in the attack manager because that makes more sense, right? So we'll go um, like a public bool or public float um, custom, uh, tech modifier. 
That might be stupid. That might be stupid. Um, uh, let's roll. Let's roll with that. Because that kind of gives us like the... That gives us like a weird variable. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do like a private custom flow, custom attack modifier. And I'm going to do a public pool. I'm going to call this... Um, uh, can do damage. It's going to be true uh, by default. This modifier will just be one, and we'll just call it can do damage modifier. Now I wonder if there's a way that I can do. If I do. I, want, I, I learned a new programming thing, and I want to try it. We'll do um, full can do damage, and we'll do um, set, and we'll say um, can do damage equal value. Is it not going to let me do this? Can I do this with a bool? I might not be able to do this bulls. Oh, it seems to say okay. And we'll set the get to can do damage uh, to the bool. And then we'll say if we'll do another line. And I think we can do this. I think we can do this. If can do damage is equal to true, we'll set can do damage modifier to uh, one. And we'll say if else if um can do damage modifier. <laughs> this might be a stupid thing. Equals false. Can do damage modifier equals zero. Uh does this actually work? That's the question. Uh it looks like it makes sense. So we'll use this bold we'll set this to private. And then um this will be our public facing thing and when it gets set actually we'll set this to public just set these both to public and see if it actually like does what i am expecting it to do uh because this is a new thing i've learned how to write um like this the set and get and uh we'll see what happens so you can only set it to true or false and if you set it to true it turns to zero or to one and if you set it to false it sets to zero and then we'll just multiply the result of the damage for the damage thing by that that's <laughs> this is this is definitely an easier way to do this uh okay it doesn't matter in this thing let's see if we can uh whoops maximize on play turn that shit off no i think this is a dumb this is a dumb dumb yeah it don't do that at all it doesn't switch anything Oh wait, hold on. That's the they call both candy damage. So that's not even gonna. Um. Okay, hold on. It's not. It's not all lost. It's not all lost. Um. This is the one we're setting. Uh, view. We'll just call it view. I don't think it's actually gonna show up in the inspector. No, it doesn't show up because it's uh it's like that. So this is the what gets set by code. So this is private. Um so that's not even so this is a terrible idea. Uh if we were to set this through code, this should still work though. So I wanna do uh I'll keep this public. And we'll try something like on start can do damage. I, I, I really just want to see if this works. So if we set this to false, it sets this to false. And then that should make our modifier zero. So we'll put this public. We'll just, these are the only ones we can see. Uh, we'd have to write a custom property drawer probably to see the other one, perhaps. It's spaghetti code. Everything's spaghetti code. So 
at start it sets it to false and now it's zero so if we turn this on okay it's zero so we can control it easily and if this is uh set to zero and this is set to false um, and we say instead we say set to true uh where am i set to true so we start set the true can do damage on a startup just for testing. It should flip the number to a one. And this variable will also be switched. Okay, so that's like a cool way to do that, I, I I guess. Or like a very convoluted way to do like something very simple. Uh so we can turn these to private. And so these will never get touched by anything outside the class. And then other classes can say whether or not we do damage. And if we set it to true, we switch that modifier. If we set it to false, we switch that modifier. And then we can also retain, return whether or not we do damage. I like that. I think that's nice. Might be stupid, but I think it's nice. And then we'll just put these. Um, we'll take this whole thing here. And we'll just say uh, times can do damage modifier that's not how i do that because it's a float uh so let's just change this to an int because it, it's only going to be one or zero and we'll get rid of these f's i should have foreseen this that the only place though Yeah, and that's just zero it out. The only thing is, is that I can't set this. Um, from the title. Because setting this one, it, I can only do it with this one. So what I could do is. Oh, this is so, this is so convoluted. Okay, okay. Um, on a wake, is there no start? Okay, let's add a start. That's kind of well, I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, start. We'll just say um. I believe attack manager is not even here. Actually, I don't want to do that. Where's the attack manager? I think this is really cool. Um, but I was hoping that I could switch this in the editor and it would do something. I could do another bull that's just like attached. Or I could do, I could make this public and defeat this entire purpose, the entire purpose of this. And just go like on start can can do damage equals can do damage. Oh, that's so uh, silly. But does it work? Kind of, it's like a weird way to do it um, that just negates the whole thing I did, but it allows us to set the modifier through a bool. There's probably a way better way to do that. So it's off. And if I run it, it's zero. And if I switch that through code, it doesn't update it because it's not related. So that's a problem. Okay, uh, I'm just going to stop trying to use a fancy thing. And uh, we'll just do like a, a quick check um, when I'm in the attack. And we'll just be like, if can do damage, um, can do damage modifier equals 1F, or sorry, 1 else whoops that was a weird else um can do damage modifier equals zero that's the easiest way to do it uh i just want to check this stuff out uh, and this will be private this will be public and then we'll get rid of this really cool thing that i liked a lot i liked it a lot um i've learned it recently and now i know 
how to, I played with it a bit there. So now we know more about it. Uh, but we'll keep this public and uh, we'll just have it set over here. So before we do damage for any of the colliders, we check if we can do damage. Probably just do this in the top and attack. I don't. It's not. It's not like it's going to change. So after we set ourselves into the attacking state, we just check if we can do damage, and then we switch the modifier around. That way, it updates every time we make an attack. It or checks every time we make an attack. And um, just because I, I want to test it, I always like to test everything just in case. So there's no like hidden bugs that come later. So we'll leave it on and then we'll make sure everyone can kill each other when we approach. And then we'll turn it off. And we'll make sure everyone just hits each other over the head until we come in. loading I should move this window so it's a little smaller so cutscene of him running up we're gonna follow all hell that lip breaks loose uh, they're stable still able to kill each other like intended but now that guy's freaking out and attacking his friend these guys aren't attacking oh uh, why why are you set to NBC? You should be. Vector handler, uh, NPC neutral. Uh, AI component, who's your target? Player, closest priority, good. Uh, and then this guy over here, the, the OG. Character handler, he is an NPC. And his AI is saying um, aggressive. Oh, no, it should be alert because the player is there. So he's supposed to be like ignoring the player. NPC idle behavior. Uh, player reaction, ignore and look at. Um, but he should be ignoring us. So I should have that. I don't believe that's coded in. So we'll go to AI component. Uh, we'll find the ignore behavior. Locomotion speed, that's why. It's because uh, we have to go movement and manager.agent.speed equals zero. Um, no, no, what ha no, that's wrong. Uh, th it shouldn't be zero. It should be ignore. So it should just return to idle or something. I'll have to plan it out. Um, good return to idle or move to react so uh, maybe just process uh, neutral behavior as if not in alert state yeah that makes more sense uh, and th and we'll put another line here and then if the player gets super close or into react range then we can decide what to do so how would i so i think what i would do is i would where's i would process neutral behavior open up this so i could Yeah, so I'll just test that. So instead of animation lo locomotion, process neutral behavior. But that's going to create a loop where it'll it'll do the idle, and then Oh no, I have that in um, the state machine, the other state machine. So it should be okay. 
neutral behavior and we'll put in behavior, uh, current behavior. And hopefully that works. That's something we'll test right away. Or that might be wrong. Where do I set current behavior? Thought I had that set. Uh, where's process state behavior? Current behavior is set to the behavior. Okay. Okay. So we'll have him just ignore and he should just idle. He should return to idle. And then we have to check the damage thing. You son of a bitch. I don't, this is too long. The player's going to get bored. And they don't even get a chance to attack, so I have to lower their attack speed. And our boy just goes in there and just fucks him up. And then he gets stuck and then he gets hit. I'll help him out. And they are, they are idling. Okay, this guy is not. He's confused. They're all trying to get to the center, I think. Yeah, he's trying to get to where that guy is. Uh, it's improving slowly. It's getting better slowly. Uh, time to check the attack damage thing then. Oh, what the hell did I do? What the hell? What did I hit? It opened like Discord on my other monitor and tried to like invite. Oh, fuck. I won't. I have to check what that was. That was strange. Uh, history. Discord invite. Invited to use jungle tools. Oh, okay. I must have typed something into monkey. Yeah, Discord. Okay. That that was really confusing. I had no idea what happened. I'll take these two guys. Uh, attack manager. Can do damage. False. Soy dudes. I take these three bugs. Can do damage. False. And um, we'll maybe switch this guy. Uh, actually, no, they should do damage because these guys, I believe they're already turned into important, uh, uh, important NPCs, so they can't do damage. But if we lose, uh, if they, these guys decide to only the middle one will turn on us. So we'll turn his damage on so he can, uh, attack us. So now they should just all fight forever. And then when I get up to the guy in the middle, oh, I forgot to turn our um, the captain's AI damage off because I don't want him to kill these things either. No, he's going to kill the one I want to test. Okay, that uh, react range has to be fixed. Make this guy. And uh, can do damage is false now. We're taking away your damage. Stop killing my cutscene characters. He does look like a boss though, just running up and killing all three of them. But we can't have that. Yeah, this has got to be. We'll start him up. Uh, start him up closer. Um, and just have that cutscene go for maybe half the amount of time, so the player can see like, oh, he's running up. Let's go help. Uh, and then I, I also need to make it so that, okay, I got to stop them from pushing each other as well. And I have to make them have a chance to attack each other. This is a mess. This really is a mess. Maybe I should just have it all be cutscene. I wanted them to have freedom and um, we could get this to work for sure. Uh, it's just it might take a bit of 
engineering here. A little area too. So they push each other, which is a no go. Um, so they're not figuring out the right range. It might be the problem I had with the react range last time. Um, calculating the alert range by distance, I should do raycast. Um, because it was fine for most of the enemies, but these bugs are have been scaled up, so their attack their collision box is actually rather large. And we should be trying to hit their front rather than their middle anyways. Or at least like, you know, the edge of their collision box. So target an alert cone. Target an alert distance. Oh, uh, yeah, this is... Actually, no, alert distance will be how close they are. So that one's fine. We don't want to have like 20 raycasts going out. Not that that would be terrible, but it's more the re react range still. That's why I have this as reaction to player. I should put or current behavior dot AI um, dot reaction to enemy equals AI component reaction combat. That way the NPCs will do that. And then we can also do another statement or, and we'll just copy this. We don't have to type it out again. Um, put that on the lower. And we'll say reaction to NBC. That makes sense. Okay, so that should improve it. That might, uh, they were still attacking, even though this was here. Um, but I think it's because it was going down here and it was using their interact distance instead of their attack plus their interact. So they had a um, shortened distance. What happens when we work with spaghetti code? So what happens when we write spaghetti code? Everything just gets covered in spaghetti sauce. Okay, cheat load. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna fix this camera thing next because I, even I'm getting bored of it. It's too long. Yeah, it's like two seconds too long. Speed up. Okay, everyone breaks out. Uh, they're still running, but those guys are really going at it. Uh, but these guys are pushing. It's getting violent. It feels better. It's still off. What is this guy trying to do even? Okay, AI, tell me, tell me your secrets. AI component. He is in alert mode. He should be in React. So that, so he is screwing up in that way. This guy's asleep now. Oh. Why? Schedule. NBC idle. Chasing combat. Why are you sleeping, man? Uh, he is in react. Is he stuck in damage character handler? He's stuck in damaged. So that was a bug I had last time. So I switched him back to neutral. He gets in there. He's stuck in damaged again. So it's not switching him back to neutral after um, he gets hit. If this guy keeps getting woken up when he gets hit, we need to stop that as well. He's supposed to be knocked out. He's working fine. These two are actually both bugging out. Let's see if he's also in alert stage. Uh, he's in neutral. He is in alert. Why? Interact distance is 1. 1. 1.2. Okay, what about 1.6? So it's just a, it's just the awkwardness of their interact distance. Oh, I should have tested their attack range to make sure that was working. 
Okay, run the sim again. I'll st uh, start with hitting the M button so it go should go faster. Yeah, I'll just do that from the start. Okay, let's run the sim. Okay, good, they're still doing it. Uh, he is attacking now. Okay, good, they're locked in. If I switch the attack manager. Okay, he is attacking this time. I need to make them stop pushing each other. That's the big thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, OS. Jungle area. This will be a stupid fix. But we're not going to have a lot of NPCs fighting people. Uh, so we'll go to our torch bearer schedule. NPC idle behavior. And we'll have this AI defend position behavior. I actually have this. Um, already set. So we'll have it be defensive combat. And we'll switch the goblins to do that. So we'll get their torchbearer schedule. And instead, uh, actually we'll go to AI systems. We'll make our own. Uh, we'll make a system AI schedule. And we'll just say AI NPC defend position schedule. Uh, hmm. No, that's not what the intended purpose of that was. Uh, not that naming scheme, at least. AI schedule. AI um, NPC. Oh, AI oh, jungle goblin guard um, schedule. We'll call this the cutscene schedule. Bug invasion. Oh, that's such a long name. No, 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 no. Bug invasion, guard, guard, uh, guard schedule. And that way, um, we'll just put it so it's 24 seven. So it's always happening. And we'll make a behavior for the NPCs that's we'll just drag in that defensive one. Defend position behavior. So at 24-7, they're just gonna stand there and defend and they'll ignore the player. And they'll ignore the fellow NPCs for now. They're too busy fighting. And we call that schedule bug invasion guard schedule. So I'll also make a folder. Or jungle area um, schedules. <laughs> ah, this this is a uh, this is not um, this is not ideal. I just want it to work first. Make it work first. Fix it later. So they'll stay in place, and then these guys, we can make like an enemy version of it. Uh, but first, let's just run it, because um, they might, only the guards really need to stay in the place. Okay, and this guy comes in and fucks it up pushes them around, but the other guys do stay in place and they attack. Oh, wait, what? He's still stuck in his timeline. Uh, that shouldn't be happening. There's a, there's a, there's a problem. There was a, there was a, a console error. Uh, what was the error? Given key was not present in what animation dictionary what the hell 
Animation clip, try play animation. Script handler. Absorb. Why the hell would they be trying to play that? Okay. Um, I hope that happens again so I know that it's not going to be randomly doing that in the future. It must be with the defensive position. Yeah. Okay, so it's defensive AI component. Uh, where is that defensive? It's the alert. Character is blocking equals false. Okay, that's why. It's because I have defensive is not about blocking. It's about defending, and that's not set up properly. Okay. Well, if that's the case, we'll just change it. Just get rid of the is blocking. And we'll just have them do. Like an idle. We just won't have them chase. We'll just have them idle. So I guess we'll just play location zero. Oh, this is a mess. What have we done? What have we done? Yeah, so alert, they shouldn't be defensive blocking on alert. They should be blocking a reaction first off. So that was, a, that was, I don't know why I put that at all. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess they can defend like when they see you coming, but, or if they have like a shell, like if we have enemy enemies, they could go into shell before you get there. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll make another thing that doesn't say defensive. It says guard or something. I, I don't know. Okay. There we go. They're getting their asses kicked though. And they're not. Doing anything but just they're just taking it to the face. Well, at least they're not sliding around. They should be trying to go to their combat stage though. So it's in, it's it's bet it's getting there. It's getting there. It's a mess. It's a mess. Um. Bug invasion guard schedule. Bug invasion guard schedule. NBC defend position, defensive than combat. I don't understand why it's not jumping to combat. Okay. Okay, I will return momentarily.
Okay, I have returned. So we're gonna figure out it's it's probably them not going into React. So I'm gonna open this up again. I'm just gonna take that approach timeline. No, we have to keep it on. Enter zone timeline. Just cut this camera. I think just by a bit, just to see. That might ruin it, but we'll see what happens. So you remove a couple seconds off of it. We still have to move them up forward though, so it doesn't because it'll um kick out just as we see them. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's better. I'm gonna run up. When I get into this collision sphere, this trigger sphere, their AI activates. And they're still in alert, so they're just not getting into react range with the bugs. I'm gonna grab this bug. Uh that's the wrong thing. I'm gonna pause the game, move him back like here. And even still, he doesn't want to react. So it's something to do with targeting function. The range should be fine. This is why I, um, need to do the same thing that I did down here. I don't know how I missed this. That was very silly of me. Reaction to enemy, NPC, and player. If, if that's the case, we use the attack range plus the interact distance. Not just if it's attacking the player. Or if the current behavior has a reaction to player that's equal to combat. So the enemies, they're not attacking the player, but they have a reaction to the player that's combat. So it was doing this. So this means that if they have any reaction at all, that's combat oriented, we do the attack. Now I'm gonna make a note. I should also, uh, sh should compare the behavior depending on what the target's type is. So that way, if the target, so even if, so that way it's more reflective of what we're actually trying to get in combat with. So if we're trying to like talk to the player, but one of our reaction to enemy is combat. We'll still have the attack range to be able to talk to the player. So this is this is this is glitched. Uh, this needs to be added, or else we'll use attack range to talk to the player. Let's make those notes, and then we'll go see if this fixes the problem. And then we'll probably fix this problem because that's a big that's a big problem. The more we use these components, the more we figure out what's wrong with them. The more we learn. And run our ass up. Get in there. Now they're 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 still getting attacked, but are they reacting? No, they're still in alert. Son of a bitch, what the fuck? guy doesn't even want to help. He's just stuck in alert mode. Okay. Clearly there's some massive bug that I'm not seeing. 
they're in chase, they'll chase. But if they're in defensive, they won't do anything. They should just stand there until they get into range. But they are in range. And if I move them back and they walk up, they stay in alert mode. That's why. Oh, I messed up. That's an on alert finished. This needs to be on alert here. But even so. This here is wrong. I've changed some things in the last couple of streams and I haven't updated them. So this on alert behavior finished has to be switched bit depending on the behavior it just wants the alert behavior so we have to say which type I'm not sure that's even going to matter. Take this function here. I see. I see what's wrong. We can switch them in here. That works. But we don't have the same switch statement um, for uh, the alert behavior down here. I think that's the issue. So we're processing the correct behavior. And then when we call alert stop, it's doing it for the player, which might be screwing with it, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't stop it.
because it works on chase. It just doesn't work on defense. is frying my brain. Uh, was working on music. Uh, right on you, you make music. Yeah, I got hired to do soundtrack for commercial games, so I'm trying to finish it before Dragon Ball Sp uh, Sparking Zero gets released, so that's cool. So you uh, you do soundtracks for games? That's awesome. We have 16 days to do it. Nice. How long does it uh, usually take you? Like, do you have, you have to do like several soundtracks or like a single one for that? Like, how long does it usually take you to? Well, I guess that's two questions there. Like, do you have to do several? And how long does it usually take you to do a soundtrack? Single game? Okay, right on. So you got to do like the whole soundtrack. Damn. Bring out a three minute song in one hour and 30 minutes. That is a bop. Nice. You must have uh, been at it for, or you must have been at it for a while, or you must have had a lot of experience making songs to be able to make it that fast i can produce songs really fast like a couple days ago i made three songs in a day nice that's pretty fast pretty skilled ben maybe it's just a schedule i've screwed up here let's go back to the jungle area guy I've screwed something up do you want to listen to some uh do you have like a uh, YouTube I can check it out later bug invasion schedule the other 24 defend position you do right on is it the same as your username Alert the enemy defensive, alert the enemy combat. Nope. Uh, well, if you have a, a username, put it in the chat. I'll check it out. Oh, you've been doing this for like half a decade? Right on. Uh, XW Wraith. Awesome. I like the lead speak in it, the numbers and the symbols. Let's put that over here. Type it in. Hold on. I'll check that out. I 
I'll give it a listen after stream. What kind of genre do you do? Like all over the place or, or like a, a bunch of different ones? Or do you have like a specific genre you focus on? Uh, I see you have glitch core. Crooked. Prototype zero zero. That sounds like a cool name. Maybe it's in this behavior script. Maybe it's somewhere. Maybe the issue is somewhere. No. Actually, here I'm going to switch this to Chase, and we'll see if that changes things. Maybe it's like some. Maybe it's just some weird. But you do uh, various genres. Uh, you can listen to it on stream. I won't copyright strike you. Uh, also, it's not just silence. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll play one on stream then. Um, I'll I'll give. Uh, I think prototype zero zero sounds cool. Is that coming through? Uh, feedback, yeah. I like that. Yeah, this is this is bopping. Yeah, I like this. It's pretty good. There we go. Nice. I like this one. This one's good. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Hell yeah. It's pretty head bobbing. Uh, afternoon, hope the program has been going well today. Welcome, uh, Bayadun. It's uh, been pretty good. We're uh, struggling on this one part, but uh, cutscene's a bit better now. Hope you've had a great day. And we're just listening to uh, Deus Ex Nexus's uh, songs on YouTube here. Pretty bopping. Yeah, these guys still aren't like attacking in response. Oh, yeah, but we got the cutscene working. This guy runs up and just starts uh, hammering these guys in the back. We turned their damage off. Just these guys, we can't get them to react in defend defense mode. So I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, yeah, Davis, that was uh, that was pretty good, man. That was bopping. When you said you could make a bop. Uh, I, 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 you proved it. It's pretty good. Uh, no longer attacking the dead mobs. Unfortunately, the guy keeps getting hit, so he uh, wakes up. Yeah. So I, I gotta make this guy, like, stay in sleep mode. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna subscribe. I'll hit subscribe here. That was good stuff. I'll probably check out a couple more of those uh, later. Or maybe we'll put one more on. Just real quick. I have a bunch of works in progress in SoundCloud. Right on, right on. Uh, why is this guy not... 
reacting. Okay, this time they didn't hit the sleeping guy. I like the dubstep track right on. We love the dubstep. Here, what's another one? Uh, let's go to your most viewed one. Uh, I'll play a melancholy, melancholy. See what that one's like. Oh, this is a bit different. Is that too loud for the stream or is that, is that good for everyone? Where's the fence of? It's fine, uh, right on, right on. Maybe it's this thing. Uh, no, because this moves them into range. This confuses me so much. Why, why is this not working? It's one of those things. It must be in the targeting function. Yeah, this one's pretty chill, this uh, song. I like this one too, it's good. Give that a thumbs up. Which core has no chill? Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty cool, man. You're uh, you're really good at that, actually. Oh, you have a song named Glitchcore. Okay, we'll put that one on, actually. That's your uh, second most watched, I believe. Let's put it up. One more view. Okay. This one's fast. beats per minute yeah this one's real fast kind of reminded me of like sonic at the start your other songs are 300 or 350 oh shit so this one's not as fast as the others hmm Give this one a thumbs up as well. Yeah, that one's pretty good too. I think my favorite one though so far has been uh, Prototype Zero Zero. I think that one was pretty like, pretty dope. Okay, I'm going to focus on getting this defense thing to work now. This is really confusing me. I'm not sure why it's like this. This one at uh, enter react range. Uh, void zero is like prototype similar. I remember we'll give uh, one more. We'll do one more listen. Let's see what that one's like because I'm curious. Void X0. I want to hear this.
Alright. That's cool. There we go. Oh, I like this part here. That one's good too. I think uh, Prototype 00 is still my favorite. Yeah, those are good. Uh, thanks for sharing those. Some good listens. Definitely some head bopping going. Thank you for listening. No problem. No problem. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Okay, I gotta figure out why this code is doing what it's doing though. I think what's happening is these guys are entering react mode and leaving it right away. Stop this guy. Pause him, move him away. I'm gonna just grab this bug. Pause his schedule and just move him right in front. So it is working. Pause his schedule. This guy's sleeping still. Neutral is an alert. Grab this guy. So their range is just too low. Is that been the whole problem this whole time? Interact distance plus one. And their attack. Problem spear attack. You got 29 works in progress on SoundCloud. That's a lot of works in progress. Nice, man. A lot of things in the, uh, a lot of things in the oven, I guess, as they say. Oh, our target range is like 0.5. No wonder it's not working. Now switched it. Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to switch it back. <laughs> A whole fucking bakery? Right on, yeah. 
There's a lot in the oven in this one. So I, th I think I figured out the issue is I'm saying um, I'm treating defensive like they should ignore, but they should actually rotate towards the target. They might just be slightly off in the rotation because the goblins are kind of like um, the way they stand is kind of side. Their, their front's kind of like on the side. You have 178 project files. Damn, that's a lot of project files. We'll grab this rotate towards and locomotion. I'll just say this. Actually, we'll put this at zero or one for walking. Okay, this needs to be zero. Later, add in speed for walking in place. Go to rotate towards target. Make sure that's good. And we'll see if that fixes it. You like making music? Well, you're pretty good at it. Got talent. Talent and skill. Thanks, no problem, no problem. Yeah, th those are making my head bop. They're pretty good. Check on this guy here. Go to his his AI should say react. No, it's still a, it's still an alert. And he's actually is fully rotated. So I think it is just their attack distance. Yeah. Switch that yet. You just got a song idea? Nice. Can you hear the music in your head? Or do you have like a theme that you think of when you get an idea? I can't really, I've, I've never like been able to make music. So I'm just curious what, like uh, for you is a, an idea, like how you get inspiration. Do you like have the, the bop in your head kind of like form in your head? Right on. That's pretty cool. So you've got like that that mind for like simulating music on demand or on the go. That's pretty awesome. Uh the attack range is I think this attack cone is not going off. I think that's the issue. It's gonna be debug dot log. I'm going to say uh, character trying to react. Uh, trying. Oh my god, I can't spell. Trying to react. I'm going to put plus. I'm going to say source object name. And if this pops up with the goblin guys, we know it's working. And I think I hit play. So it's going to compile weird. Yeah. So we got to turn that off. Because this 0.5 attack range number plus the interact range, it should be okay. Because it's a, a ray cast. So, and they seem to be in range. You drink. From here on, we slowly lose in it. Slowly lose energy. It's already happening. Hector's trying to react. And the spear people are showing up. Hit pause though. Whoops. Enter react mode. Jungle spear, jungle spear. So it literally is the range. Because they are using the right thing here. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna move this right here. What have I done? Target is in React Cone. Why did I name these the same? Am I crazy? Target in React Cone. This needs to be renamed. Um, check if target in React. What was I thinking? Because this is this just does the same thing down here. But this checks if uh, if the target's within based off behavior. But this is the actual React cone code. Why did I do that? No wonder there's an issue. Okay, time to run the code again. Yeah, going back and refactoring or refactoring, whatever the word is. I think it's refactor. Uh, changing the code and moving around is. It's made it a little confusing, so I have to clean it up a bit. So hit M. As soon as we lose our speed, that's when things go off. Kind of working. Pause. I think that's actually working a lot better now. I, th I think that's literally what the problem was, is I had... Holy shit, it works now? Is that seriously the problem? Now he's out of alert. But he is reacting. So if he doesn't get attacked like constantly, uh, pain in the ass to implement shall not pursue. Oh shit. Too many notes going on. I'm going to remove this statement here. I think it's literally because I might have named these the same things. The uh, Because it was static, it was getting confused, even though these are different. Because I don't think I changed anything else except for that that rotate in defense mode. Let's get rid of these exiting and entering debugs. Uh, no, it's just that sometimes you have this idea that sounds great, but when but you put it inside a, a uh, DAW and it sounds bad or it would be too much work to make it work. Oh, okay. I understand that. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get an idea for like programming something. And then when I, start to program it i'm like oh wait wait a minute this is going to be a lot this is going to take very many hours it also might have been this rotate might have made this work a bit better it's hard to say but it works um not very well but it works uh, I kind of am disappointed with what I've gotten done today. 
Um, I feel like this is actually like a terrible idea. I should just script it more. Um, and have the fighting just be a little bit more scripted rather than whatever the hell happens when we run up here. Because they just, like, they start fighting and it's good. And this guy comes in. And uh, they are attacking. Um, but because they're, like, invincible, it just looks like a clusterfuck. And we're going to come in. And obviously, like, we will try to save everyone. This guy attacks us save him and then they just go and like look at him he's i mean that wasn't terrible uh i just think it it's not clean because um it's random right and that was the uh, intention is that it kind of changes every time because it's more like they're being real but um i don't know i'm gonna I'll probably move this guy back a bit so he's just out of the fight in general And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to do that and run it again. And another, another thing with, like, giving the, the characters freedom to, like, move around in the cutscene is that they're, they're going to, um, they kind of, they kind of need to be tested over and over again. And there's, like, there's always, like, a slight chance that something's going to go off slightly. Or like between different machines, like things might process at different rates, and it could just fuck it up somehow in the future. This is a, a suboptimal. But if it's completely scripted, like it's completely hard coded in, so to speak, it's never gonna like you know jump out at us uh, unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, words. Um. I mean, that kind of looks better. That guy needs to, because that guy's in in uh, defensive mode. He's not gonna like move out of the way. So that actually, that defensive mode actually needs to be switched a bit. I should have just kept them at chase and tried to make them not move. They shouldn't have moved. So maybe fixing. Some of that other code might have. I'm going to switch it back. Yeah, this torch bearer schedule. And we'll see if that works. And uh, if it doesn't, we'll kind of move on because it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Am I crazy? Did I not make. This is the wrong jungle. This is the wrong jungle. Jungle area two. I was about to say, did I not make these transporters? I did. So take these two spear guys and we'll switch them from bug invasion and we'll put them back to torch. Uh, NBC jungle torch goblin. Double check to make sure that's the right one. And this is the wrong one. Um. I want the one where they uh is it in here? I want the one where they actually um Torchbearer, NVC Jungle where they don't go to sleep. Yeah, they just idle the chase. That's probably, yeah, it reacts to player. So what's the one I had before? Damn it. it must have been the goblin one. Torch. Yeah, goblin, torch, bearer, default schedule. NBC idle. Yeah, okay. This needs to be sorted out. I'll see if maybe that react cone thing was the problem, um, not the rotation on defense. Let's see if maybe it reacts a little bit better. 
If not, I think I'm going to keep it to be Chase because um, really him standing in place as his buddy's getting attacked and mauled by a giant bug is kind of ridiculous. And they are kind of working better now. So I think that react range was the problem. Yeah, like look at him just dance, like lunge over and just start fucking him up. There we are. Cool. Okay. Okay. So it was something, it's because I had, uh, I th either I changed something and now I've completely forgot about it, and or it's because I had this. Excuse me. Um, this thing here named the same and that was causing some weird issue because it's static. I don't I don't even know. I'm just guessing. Mm. I gotta change these. Um these sh uh these should be static like the rest, I guess. And just overwritten because if they're going to get declared every frame we might as well get rid of them tab to remove tab to remove and let's call these private static just copy this um i don't know if this is like a great thing but uh i'd rather if this is going to get called over and over again i'd rather not declare this uh, glad to see you got it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, it's a, uh, it's good that uh, <laughs> it's good that it um worked. I, I, I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why. Sometimes that's the fun thing about coding is sometimes something will fix, and you have like an idea of why it fixed, but you're, it's like I don't actually know. Um, so we might as well test this now that I've switched the quaternions and the vectors to static to see if they are going to screw up now or if it's going to work. They should get assigned before they're used every time, so they shouldn't be overlapping. Because it's static, it's like something that can be accessible. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not dependent on the individual, it's accessible across. Oh, okay. Now he's still pushing. Well, they're pushing less. They are kind of sorting their duel out. Uh, I remember when you mentioned uh, when you change things up and it ends up fixing your issue, you still have no clue how to fix what happened. Yep. Yeah, that's the, the it's the joy about programming. So, sometimes things just go haywire. Oh, you know what? I think I can make these guys... Um, if I go into the jungle, you fix one thing, it breaks another. You fix one thing, it fix something you didn't even expect. Yeah, it seems to be the case here, uh, but I'm glad it's working. Yeah, me too. Um, I think that what I can do as well is I can take these guys and I can grab their um, their schedule here, Goblin Torchbearer. I'll take this NPC idle. I actually do the, I'll just mimic it and I'll say, NPC idle at waypoint um, at guard post at guard post and instead of idle I say idle at waypoint and then we'll have the same stuff um, and we'll have but what we'll do is take these spear guys switch them for idle at or sorry the the Take their schedule and say idle at um, guard post. And I think if I remember correctly, I've programmed that so that it goes to the target uh, in the idle. Idle at waypoint. So I think what we can do is we can grab... Um, sorry, what one is the waypoint? Target waypoint. Go to definition. And we go down here. I think it's just a public waypoint. Yeah, start position. Okay.
And what I'll do is I'll um I'll create a new an empty game object, call it guard point. I'll bring it out of them. So it's where they're standing. And then I'll uh duplicate that one there, hit X so it's global, move it there and rotate it a bit so it's lined up with where he is now. And we'll call this guard so it's guard point one and two. Um and just for uh we'll call it guard point R, guard point L. And just for now, I'll grab this guy and we'll put his AI component, his target waypoint will be waypoint L. This guy on the right, his target waypoint will be waypoint R. And uh, I'll run that. And then I believe that should make it so that, did I, wait, did I switch that? Jungle uh, area two. I believe that should make it so that when they, um, I remember how I programmed it. Yeah, they should they should idle at that. What did I hit? Oh, whoops! It's trying to get me to enter their Discord group. I keep putting I I'm typing something that's like, yeah, is instead of os, so it says Discord. So it's trying to get me to enter their Discord um, title for the uh, monkey tools. Yeah, they added it into the. Uh, the um, um, macro keys or whatever, the hot keys. Okay, he's uh, he's not supposed to be sliding. He wasn't sliding before. Oh, it's because he switched his uh, his thing switched now, because he has the same schedule as these guys. So, we'll kill these guys for them. Oops. And now he sh they should they should both get back into position. Perfect. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Dark Souls three is fifty percent off. Right on. Dark Souls three is pretty good. Um, yeah, Dark Souls three was fun. I'm not sure what one is my favorite, but I've played all three. They're pretty good. Target waypoint of AI component AI component is not set. That's why. We'll also say here if target waypoint is not equal to null. We'll just take all of this code and throw it in there. And then yeah, and if if not, it just will idle in place. So we'll just say else idle in place because there's nothing to go. There's nowhere to go. And we'll just keep that there. And then we'll go up here. Delete this. Control S. Delete this. Control S. And then we'll. I don't know. We gotta shift. Actually, that guy shouldn't have changed. Why was he doing it? Oh my gosh, I keep hitting too many buttons too fast. Uh, OS, jungle, area two. Uh, I do not want to save whatever just happened with the title screen. Um, and we want to grab our friend here. And jungle, torchbearer, default schedule. This got changed, so I need to set it back, I believe. No, yeah, okay, it, it got changed over here. So we have to say, um, we'll, D, we'll just control D this. Um, goblin, goblin, captain, watch default schedule. Instead of torch bearer, and we'll say instead of torch, we'll say goblin guard. Default schedule. Yeah. Okay. And then the torch bearer one, the torch default, we'll just say uh, NPC idle. 
yeah. NPC idle is the one that just says chasing combat when people get in our face. And we'll grab our uh, friend here. Move to schedule. Whoops. Goblin porch. Schedule. And NPC idle at behavior. And we'll run that just from the top. Uh, it's 357, so I will be stopping right after this. Because there's uh, nothing else to really do right now that we can do in the next two minutes. So let's test to make sure this is working as intended. And then we'll fix anything next time. And then that should be this cutscene hopefully finished next time. Because for the most part, like it's like it 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 runs in. We see the camera. Uh, we chase this guy out. We have to make sure that our character doesn't just like bank left or right. But I guess we can just like imply that the bugs are just gonna keep fighting. Um, and then these guys fight. Uh, they're not supposed to be able to kill anyone. I don't know how that guy killed. Oh, this bug killed that bug. Because this guy's the only one that has damage, I think, because he's supposed to attack the player. Um, so we come in and we kill them. Everyone's not like freaking out. Sometimes they do though. They walk back into the position. Everything's dead. And then we play another cutscene where this guy's like, oh, thank you again for the help. And these guys are like, we'll stand guard. You go talk to the chieftain or something like that. And maybe this guy wakes up and he's like, oh, what happened? Hell yeah, man. Yeah, it's coming along. And then we enter here and the chieftain will be somewhere around here. And then, um, we'll start working on the cutscene for the uh the chieftain duel which um this guy shrunk down he's supposed to be a little bit taller because he's supposed to be uh bigger than the other goblins um so i think it's because i moved his asset back over here from because he, he was over in this temple scene over here which this is uh some of the characters that are going to be the villains Let's show them real quick this is all from mesh tint from the unity asset store just different packs that he has. This warlock is the main villain. This guy in the middle. Oh, they look great. Yeah, they, it was a great asset pack. They, well, it's a few different asset packs, but uh, Mesh Tin has made a lot of really good uh, art. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where all of them are going to go, but I have a pretty good idea. And then, then after we do the temple or the dual arena, um, we can enter the temple. Uh, hmm, I sense an ancient power who dares approach the sacred temple after all these years. Explain who we are. An alchemist apprentice named Brew, you say. How intriguing. It has been centuries since one of your kind has graced this land. I am Mundi. Tell me what brings you here. Explains again. Ah, I see. You seek the secrets hidden within the walls and to combat a powerful foe. Very well. But be aware, alchemist, for the temple's depths hold dangers beyond your wildest imagination. Are you prepared to face them? Maybe we'll change the talk animation between those. Very well. Let us see if your skills are up to the task. I wish you the best of luck on your quest, Alchemist. Then Mundi opens up. And then we can do... Uh, we have to fix that um, that sliding. Uh, they're just hanging out until you're ready to work on them. Yeah. I was trying to figure out where I was going to put them all. Because um, I have an idea who's going to be in what dungeon. Um, but I'm not sure. I might change it around. Yeah, and then we have this whole jungle dungeon that you can beat. And we have... This is where I was testing the throwing mechanics. So you can hit that guy in the head with a barrel. And he's dead. Uh, in the game Brave Fenshiro Musashi, like, you can pick enemies up. So, and they, they just kind of do their walk animation. So certain enemies are going to be pick upable. And then the, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to change this puzzle. I, I think it's, no, hold on. I think it's just this button, but you can like fix statues and they'll breathe fire because they're fire traps and then they'll burn uh, grass and stuff. Yeah, there's a, and then I think if you hit this button, it, it, it yeah, it refreshes it. So there's a reset orb. I have to add particle effects and sounds for that. Um, and plan out the dungeon more like these light these lantern puzzle keys um, you have to collect 
Okay, this is always a bit glitchy. I have to fix these. Okay, it wasn't bad there. You have to collect these, but you can only open the doors, so you have to figure out, like, oh, yeah, that was glitchy. Maybe I'll make these, like, a timeline thing. So you have to figure out where to put them. So when you do this one, like, there's a there's another one at the end. I'll just speed it up. Uh, the collision box needs a little fix there. Just put it in the end here. Just grab this one. It's very simple. There's not like a lot going on here. The AI there needs a little fix, I think. It's not reacting. But then you can place this one to open this door, and you can just grab this one over here. And then you can exit with a light bulb, a light orb. And then you can proceed out the dungeon, or at least to the next one. Let's just take this barrel with us. Missed. Their AI is all broken. Oh, that guy's it's supposed to explode as well. Yeah, so the dungeon's uh, finished. It's uh, it's just like getting the player here um, in a manner that's not just like walk up to the temple. Um, that's, what, that's pretty much what I'm working on. And then the first demo, I'm going to upload it to Steam or something. Because um, once I uh, get it so that you walk up and there's like a story and stuff, I just have to do bug fixes and then it's uh it's here. And also like figure out if this is exactly how I want them to be. So you get this and it burns these roots in the way. Oh heck yeah, I can't wait. Ah, uh, uh thank you, awesome, thank you. Um yeah, and there's like uh you know these traps that I'm zooming through with the speed up. Yeah. And I'll uh close that there because it's kind of like it all need it all it all needs work i'll be working on it in the dev streams for sure um yeah but it's uh 404 now so uh, i'm going to arrow out and uh shut down the stream so thanks for hanging out um i'll be back on at seven and to beat digimon world three and then uh i'm also gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do next um uh, i was looking at that digital card battle game and apparently uh, the only one I have access to is it that's in English is a sequel to the Japanese one, so they unle they released two of them. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna play that one. I, I might uh, for sure catch up uh, with you later. Uh, yeah, uh, catch you later. Uh, thanks for hanging out again. Uh, yeah, I looked at the ROM. There's the Japanese version. There, there's two Japanese ones, right? And then there's the English version of the second one. And I don't I don't I don't know if they have like. I don't know if I, I even looked at the card battle and it, it actually looks like it's like a weaker form of um, Digimon World 3's card battle. It looks like uh, it looks like they just took the original card game with the triangle, uh, the different, the three different shapes and you just like pit those against each other. So I, I'm not even sure if I'll, um, I'm not sure. I'll figure out a game to play. I'm not sure yet. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm going to have a look at um, my library on Steam, look at some ROMs, think about some older games I've played, and we'll figure it out. Uh, anyways, I'm going to head off, so uh, cheers for now. And uh, take care, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers.